Now, Calvinists, they like to act like Socrates, Plato, and Aristotle, so I'm not going to keep defending myself on everything that I say. So they might say that I'm mislabeling Calvinism about God choosing people to burn in hell. I know all the technical arguments from Calvinism, but I don't care to please what they want, okay, what they say. What I want to do is just cover the basic points. That's it. Basic points, make it plain as day, and then show it through evidence of the scripture. That's it. All right. I've listened to Calvinist debates. I'm not being mean, but it's the truth. When I listen to Calvinist debates, what they like to do is that they all they like to do is dance around the issue, play philosophical wordplay with you. They don't get to the main point and the main argument. Now, you know me. I'm very thorough in argument and evidence and debunking and counter-responding and responding, etc. So I'm all for that. But I'm not all for dancing around the issue, going all over with wordplay, and using rhetoric to make yourself look smart. That's not how you win a debate successfully. That's just being pitiful. That's just, that's just pretense. That's just pretense. It's not real. Okay, so Calvinism, they're the, they're the people that study one of the three groups that you're going to find the most annoying about debating scripture. Because these guys, what they do is that they do nothing but just study the scripture. Uh, isn't that a good thing, Pastor? No, that's not a good thing. Okay, let me explain. It is a good thing that you study the scripture. Amen. But if that's all you do with your life, then I'm sorry, you're a loser. Now, what do I mean by that? What I mean by that is, let's say you have a wife and children, and all you do is study the Bible at home, and you ignore your wife and children. Aren't you a loser? Amen. Yes, you are. Okay? You got to take care of your children's need, your wife's need. Let's say all you do is study the Bible, and you don't go out on the streets. You don't go out in public to tell people how to get saved. You're a loser, and an incredible loser at that. Okay, so that's what Calvinists are. They are incredible losers. So that is really unfortunate, and that is sad. So I'm going to, so they have a lot of arguments and counter arguments. Okay, so let me just break it down easy for you, and then demolish it. So 1 Timothy chapter 2, this is our first verse, okay? Now what they like to do is that these Calvinists don't believe in all, okay? So whenever we use all men in the Bible to be saved, that means all, right? All means all? Okay, if the Bible says God wants all men to be saved, then that should mean all. But Calvinists, they like to deny this. So because they like to deny this, they like to do philosophical wordplay with you, and they'll say that's not what the Bible really means. Well, it says all men. What else could it mean? No, it means some men. How do you get that? <laughs> It says all, A-L-L, -L, not S-O-M-E. Okay, so let me explain right here. 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 1. I exhort, therefore, that first of all, supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for who? All men, for kings and for all that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who will have what? All men to be saved. Okay, now what they like to say is that this is not really referring to all men. Well, yes, it does. It says that. No, it doesn't, okay? Okay, how do you get that? Well, because they, all they do is sit at home, okay, and study the Bible over and over and over while you're busy soul winning, while you're busy getting a life and making friends and talking with people. These guys lock themselves up in a basement with their large volumes of encyclopedias and books, and all they do is study, study, study and with the Bible, and that's it. Well, here's the thing. They found a way to go around this. If you look at 1 Timothy chapter 2, we read at verse 4, who will have all men to be saved. But then what they like to do is that they like to look, focus on verse 1 through 2. Okay, verse 1 said all men, correct? All right. But who is the all men? Verse 2, for kings and for all that are in authority. Oh, okay, I see. So then right here, so I said uh, verse 12, I'm sorry. I meant verses 1 through 2. So what they're going to focus right here is all kings, all authorities. See, so this is not referring to everybody, okay? God wants all the authorities right here. This, that's what it's referring to, all kings, etc., etc. So it's referring to all kinds of people in a distinct category, they like to argue. At verse 4 and verse 6, that says all men to be saved. Okay, now, this is very simple. If all is only referring to a distinct category, then why does Paul distinguish 
Look at verse 2. For kings and for all that, in, that are in authority, that who? We. Okay. We is who? The elect, right? Okay. Aren't we the saved elect? Aren't we elected by God? Yes. So that's us. We. Oh, wait a minute. This is kind of weird. Okay. What they like to argue, the verse said all men to be saved, correct? All right. Calvinists, this is their tactic. Their tactic is, when it's referring all men to be saved, it's only referring to us, the elect, the ones who are already saved, saved Christians. So that's what they like to resort to. It's not referring to other people. Well, wait a minute right here. Then why does Paul differentiate, verse 2, we from all men? You already got the, uh, the elect mentioned. Then who is this all men? And guess what? This all men aren't the elect. Then what are we going to do? See? There goes your argument right there. Out the window. It's not referring to a distinct category. When the Bible says all, it means all. Now, if you don't like that, uh, look at verse 2. We, the elect, may lead a quiet and peaceful life in all godliness and honesty. Verse 4, who will have all men to be saved. See, it's differentiated. Now, let's look at 1, Timothy, uh, 1 Thessalonians 5. 1 Thessalonians 5. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Let's look at, so when God says all, okay, what does that mean? All, okay? That means all, okay? Well, all means uh, just some. Where'd you get that idea from? All means some. What's well, referring to all the elect? All the elect. Well, that's just brilliant. Good for you, man. But the thing is, is that it is, that's, that, uh, the reason why I'm being so sarcastic is because these people, they like to act philosophical wordplay with you. But you see how much it, uh, it diverts from common sense. All means all. And people who like to use philosophical wordplay to complicate when God's trying to be simple. When God's trying to be simple, people try to complicate it. Well, God made it more complicated than that. No, you, you're a complicated person, that's why. All right, so we're going to look at these three passages. All means all. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 15. See that none render evil for evil unto any man, but ever follow that which is good, both among yourselves and to who? All men. Okay, are we supposed to do only good to us or all men, the verse is saying. Okay, all means all. Okay, if that's not enough, 1 Timothy 4, 1 Timothy chapter 4. 1 Timothy chapter 4. And then we're going to look at verse 10, 1 Timothy chapter 4. And then we will read verse 10. For therefore we both labor and suffer reproach because we trust in the living God who is the Savior of who? All men. Oh no, that's only the elect. No, no, no. Read the next part. Especially of those that believe. Oh, you see that? So Paul's mentioning right here this includes those that believe, meaning it's not only the elect. Okay, this includes the saved Christians too. So this means all means all. Okay, we're also going to look at Galatians chapter 6, verse 10. Galatians chapter 6, and then we will read verse 10. Okay, uh, all is just referring to the saved elect. No, look at this. this these three verses are important. Because these three verses prove that all men is not only referring to the saved elect. That's important to understand. These verses prove that all men means all, not just saved elect. So these three verses are powerful. You should use them against the Calvinist. Galatians chapter 6 verse 10. As we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto who? All men. No, 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 that's only the saved elect. No, keep reading. Especially unto them who are of the household of faith. There's your saved elect. All means all. Okay, let's look at Titus chapter 2. Titus chapter 2. 
Here's another verse that says all to be saved. But then they like to dance around the issue and say it's only referring to a specific category. Specific category. So it's referring to saved elect. Look at Titus chapter 2, verse one, uh, Titus chapter 2, verses 1 through 9, verses 1 through 9. Now, how do they dance around this issue? All kinds of elect. That's what they're going to argue. Oh, pastor, come on. No, 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 I'm being serious. This is what they argue. PhD, PhD from crummy Bible colleges who aren't, that aren't prestigious either. What I disdain is that these guys act like scholars and their degrees come from universities that are very low class. Okay, so I don't like, that's why I poke fun at these guys. These guys act like they're smart, educated scholars when th these guys come from very low class schools, actually. Okay, let's look at this passage here. Titus chapter 2, and then we'll look at verse 1. But speak thou the things which become sound doctrine... All right, but let's jump down over here and see what we use right here in our verse. You're going to notice right here in verse 11. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to who? All men. Okay, all means all. No, no, no. It's referring to all kinds of elect. Where they get the idea from? Verse 2, the aged men. Verse 3, the aged women. Uh, verse 4, the young women. Uh, verse 6, the young men. Uh, let's see right here. Verse 9, the servants. So see, Paul, all he's referring to is he's referring to all these different kinds of saved elect Christians. Young women, old women, aged men, young men, and servants. That's what it means by the verse, God wants all men to be saved. It means, it's just simply saying all kinds of the elect. See how they argue? See how they argue? This is ridiculous nonsense. Okay, let's, let's assume that, okay? If all men is only referring to all kinds of the elect, like they argue, the aged woman, the young woman, the old men, the young men, and the servants, and la, 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 all that kind of stuff, the thing is, is look at chapter 3, verse 1. Show meekness unto all. them in mind to be subject to principalities and powers, to obey magistrates to be ready to every good work, to speak evil of no man, to be no brawlers but gentle, showing all meekness unto who? All men. So this all men, who is it referring to in context? Verse 1, those lost people, those lost, unsaved, unbelieving rulers in authority. Oh, it was referring to all kinds of say people. The old women, the young women, the old men, the young men, and quiet, okay? Just quiet. Look at right here. It says right here in the verse that it's referring to all men. It's that simple. Don't go on a drama show, drama show on all. It's referring to the old men, the young men, the old women, the young women. No, just stop, okay? You're just embarrassing yourself. It's referring to everybody. It's that simple. Just simple as that. But another thing right here is that in this passage, when the Bible says all, it means all. Look at verse uh, 15. Notice that Paul distinguished all the elect with all men. Didn't you know that? Look at verse 15. All that are with me salute thee. Now look at that. That all right there is referring to the saved elect, all that are with Paul. But that is automatically distinguished right there from the all men of verse 2. See? So, look, in the Bible, all means all, and if it's going to be different, the Bible will show you in the same context. These guys are trying to give educated guesses, but that it's not even educated either. But main mainly based off of these three verses. All means all, including saved elect, not just saved elect. Those three verses are powerful. Let's also look at another one, Hebrews chapter 2. Here's their other logic here, Hebrews chapter 2. Hebrews 2. 
Now, the Bible says every man. God wants every man to be saved. And then what they're going to argue right here, that every man is only referring to everyone. Okay, here we go again. So they always uh, put in a distinct category. Hebrews 2, verse 10 through 13, what every man is referring to is every one of the elect sons. Every one of the elect sons, brethren, children. Now, this is a tactic of Calvinists. I don't know if you noticed it by now. You know it's their tactic of debating scripture? When the Bible says all, they're automatically going to scrounge around throughout the whole chapter seeing anybody mentioned there. And then they're going to automatically insert that person with the all. Well, what that all is referring to is so and so 20 verses later. Well, what if 20 verses later it says Judas Iscariot? Are you going to say all of Judas Iscariot after that? But see, that's their tactic. Their tactic is to find a group of people somewhere in that chapter and automatically insert that with all. That's the Calvinist mindset. That's how they win a debate and argument. So here's the thing. Just because you work so hard in finding verses that says all and you think you got them, Calvinists are trained in something. They're trained to go 10 verses behind or all over the chapter and find a group of people somewhere and then they're going to talk like James White and give a fantastical interpretation conjured up from the imagination. Well, notice right there, it mentions about the Ninevites right here. So it's talking about all the Ninevites and stuff like that. Now, see, that's how they do it, okay? They conjure up that way. That's their tactic. When you catch that, then you're going to have to catch and turn the tables on them. Look at Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 10. For it became him for whom are all things, and by whom are all things in bringing what? Many sons to, unto glory. So notice this referring to every one of the sons. Verse 11. Uh, who are sanctified are all of one. He is not ashamed to call them brethren. See, every one of the brethren here. Look at verse uh, 13. And again, I will put my trust in him, and behold, I... I and the children which God hath given me. See, all, every one of the children. Thus at verse 9, verse 9, but we see Jesus who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death crowned with glory and honor that he by the grace of God should taste death for who? Every man. So see, Christ died for every man. But they like to say, no, this every man is referring to, verse 10, every one of the sons. Verse 11, every one of the brethren. Verse 13, every one of the children. You, saw, you see their tactic? You see that? I told you before, that's what they're going to do. They're going to look at surrounding verses. Find anybody mentioned somewhere, any human mentioned some, somewhere. If there's a rock and a plant and a tree somewhere in that verse, they might use that too to connect it. So that's their tactic. They look at surrounding verses and then they'll connect that all with that thing. So remember that mindset of Calvinists. If you have that, if you're aware of that, then you will be prepared when you debate them. That is very important to understand. That's why Calvinists are very successful in debating. It's not because they have an answer for everything. They have a certain tip, technique, for any argument that's prepared and thrown at them. All right? That's what I notice about these debates from Calvinists. They have a technique. Every one of them have their own technique. And most of the time, it's acting like a jerk, I noticed. They, 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 when they uh, debate, they talk down on you. They're not being sincere and honest. That's why I talk down on them in this teaching. Fair is fair. I do not like Matt Slick and James White. C-A-R-M, that website, is the number one website if you have a Bible question. And then you'll see C-A-R-M mentioned right there to get your uh, answers. That's from Matt Slick. And that guy is such a slick guy with a slick tongue. And I don't like his debate tactic. They have techniques where they look down on you. Not a sincere and honest person. That's not how you do an honest and sincere debate with people. 
Okay, let's uh, demolish this one, okay? Let's assume every man is only referring to every single one of the elect, like the children, the brethren, and the sons. Okay, then my question is, why does Paul talk about the lowliness of man in general, not just the elect? You think this is only the elect? No, look at verses 6 through 8. Who is every man? Who is every man? That's every man. Look at verse 6. But one in a certain place testified, saying, What is who? Man, that thou art mindful of him. Or the son of man, that thou visitest him. You think that's only referring to saved Christians? Or mankind in general? That God is saying, What good is mankind in general? Hmm. Thou madest him a little lower than the angels. Oh, that's only the saved elect. Oh, so then unbelievers are better than the angels then? Or is this... Or it makes more sense to say this is all of mankind in general is lower than the angels. See that? Thou crownest him with glory and honor and sets him over the work of thy hands. Thou hast put all things in subjection under his feet. For in that he put all in subjection under him, he left nothing that is not put under him. But now we see not yet all things put under him. See that? Then verse 9, Jesus tasted death for every man. That makes more sense. It's referring to all of mankind in general, all of humanity, being weak and lower than the angels. Not just, oh, it's only referring to the brethren and the children. Okay, so Adolf Hitler must be better than Michael the Archangel then? See, this does not make sense. Okay, this is, a, you can't just only say this is saved elect. No, this is all of mankind in general here. Now, you notice how smart they are and slick they are in giving answers? But when you sh look at the answers, you realize how incredibly, and I'm going to say this, because these Calvinists, they always use, they always talk down on people and they act like smart scholars, but they're not. They didn't even graduate from really good universities. And they act like they're, they're elitist. And I hate that elitist attitude. You've got to go down to where the lower people are, love them, and you've got to realize you're no better than a common person had it not been for Jesus Christ. All right? I've been in the same boat. Just because I graduated from Berkeley and I got myself a doctorate doesn't make me better than you. So you got to realize this, is that these people, they talk down on them and they give all these kind of jibber-jabber answer. And when you look and when you, uh, when you open up the information and look at it more deeply, you realize how incredibly stupid and dumb and it's a preschool argument that they give. Because all you had to do was look at other surrounding verses and realize this is a conjured up interpretation made by their imagination. Jeff Durbin, James White, Matt Slick, and all these guys, John Piper, John MacArthur, all these guys, these Calvinists, these guys who give these arguments, they act like intellectuals. They look very smart. But this doctrine is nothing, nothing. It is far away from common sense. All means all. Where do you get the idea from, from 10 different interpretations that doesn't mean all? Only a doctrine like that will complicate the easy words of God right here. Does, does an, let me ask you a simple question. Did you think that an average reader who read these verses when it says all men to be saved, you think they ended up with a Calvinist mindset? No. So that's dishonesty. You have to be deliberately dishonest when reading the verse and try to find a complicated interpretation because a first-time reader wouldn't think of it that way, being an honest reader at that. 